We started a series last week um, about the light, and so this word, light, is important, and I wanted to actually, uh, calling this one, Let Your Light Shine, last week was, Are You Afraid of the Light? And what I want to do is I want to actually backtrack um, for a reason. And now sometimes I won't lie that sometimes someone will come to me and say, Pastor Keith, can you explain something? I was confused, or what did you mean by that? And this is actually not the case. No one said anything. But sometimes when you're a speaker, you feel like, you know what, I could have said this a little bit different. So I'm going to re-preach the entire sermon. Just kidding. <laughs> now, just one portion. We ended with these verses, but I wanted to find the word light. I gave you a bunch of different things. I'm going to hone on this one. Light is divine illumination to reveal and impart life through Christ. And these two verses in John gave us kind of instructions, but it says if we walk in the light as he's in the light, and we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now what I want to re-explain is this is often sometimes what we can do as people. We kind of view these verses, right? We walk in the light, we confess our sins, and we kind of look at it as a car wash, <laughs> or a light car wash, if you want to say that. And so we see it, and we kind of say, you know what, wow, my life is filthy, uh, I really need to clean some things up, and Jesus offers a free soul wash, I'll take it. All right, hooray, we go through, right, and it's kind of fun, unless you're like really scared of car washes, and you get all freaked out. No, anybody there? Like, I don't know if we're going to make it out, just my wife, no. Uh, <laughs> And we, we, we come out of there and we say, hooray, I'm clean and I'm free. And now back onto the road of life and here we go. See you again on Christmas or Easter or when I need it next. <laughs> right? That's what we can do as people right? when it comes to, to this idea. And then I want to read this verse to you, John 8:12. It says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Remember, there's that word again, light, and then life. They're interconnected. They're supposed to kind of be that way. And so what should happen is this. Wow, my life is filthy. I need Jesus to do a soul wash. And then say, wait, what? I'm not just clean and free. I have life. And it's more rich and satisfying than anything I ever could have dreamed of. I'm going to walk in this light. I'm going to stay in it. And then, hey, you, guess what I found? I want to show you. I, I, I don't want to leave that. And not that I need it to keep washing me, cleaning me. We're going to walk in that, and it's different. Do you understand the difference? And we don't treat it as a car wash. We treat it as like, a, 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 we're, we're taking the car wash with us. We're, wherever we go now, we're, we're walking in that light and that life. And we have an opportunity and a responsibility to reflect that divine illumination that we talked about, that word light. Remember it said last week, John the Baptist was not the light. He was just a witness to testify to the light. So we're going to jump into the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Many of you have heard this verse. Jesus is preaching a very famous sermon. It went viral all on YouTube at the time, and people were replaying certain parts over and over. Here's one of those parts. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, it just gives two examples of this light. And and it's really interesting if you just stop for a minute and sit back. It's actually pretty practical and logical. One is on a large scale, right? You understand that, like, these cities are often built uh, on hills, for a lot of different reasons, and you could see them from far away. A lot of them were made with limestone, so you could see it. But then at night, what would happen is that everybody would put their lights on, right? And not they weren't flipping a switch and getting a bill from PSEG, right? There's candles, there's things illuminating. So from far away at night, what would you see? Multiple lights, a community lighting up a town. And so, like, think about that. On a broad, big scale, Jesus is saying there's an opportunity as a community that of light bearers, right? Now you have this light. It's shining out of you the same way a city does. Same when you're far off. You're like, oh, there's the city. And then he brings it to a local, to a home, to an individual light within your very house. You also have that same light. 
And that's kind of a cool picture, right? Like, like there, there's a, a corporate idea of looking at that, and there's an individual. Both are important. Both are necessary. And we're encouraged to shine. He says this, in the same way, right? In the same way, the way we just think pra- practical and logically about it, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Where? Publicly, community, in a big way, and a small way, individually. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. All right. So last week we had a light, and it'll, we've switched light bearers. Oh, oh, that light is bright, okay? And often what we do, yes, you have, you have to get a fancy mirror that has my daughter's name on it, just so you know, that's, that's, that's in the Bible, just kidding. And so this light shines, right? We said last week, right, this light shines on us, not in my face, no, just kidding, all right? And this light shines, right? And, and it illuminates, and it makes us realize that some things are going on in our life, and we're like, okay, the, the, I get, like I said, the, we're filthy, oh man, I've got to do something about this, and this light brings illumination, that we need Jesus. It brings that illumination, like, like I found life now in this, and we want to we kind of walk in that light. And, and what happens is then the responsibility isn't just to say, oh, wow, this is great. I, lo- I love this feeling. Let's, let's keep this going. The, the, what happens is, or, or what's supposed to happen, this is what Jesus is saying, is like, you're not just supposed to keep this light to yourself now. It's changed your life, but now you're supposed to reflect it. You're supposed to, oh, there, that's actually working. I didn't test this out beforehand. I did this years ago. You're supposed to shine it in somebody else's face. Boop. It's not as bad as what's getting shown in my face. But that's the whole point. And really, if I, if I do things right, what happens is I'm not just supposed to keep this light to myself, and I'm not supposed to be annoying with it and just keep shining it in your eyes, but I'm eventually actually supposed to get out of the way so I can point you to Jesus. And see, that's what happens is, like I said, we, we like it, and it feels good. It changes our life. And like I said, it, it's easy to even, like I said, start pointing at other people, and we can do it in a condescending way, like, oh, you need to know this. You need to know this. But ultimately, we're supposed to keep moving to the side and reflect onto the cross. And point people to Jesus. And that's what he says in this verse. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And realize that our life reflects a lot of things. If we're having a bad day, we reflect that. If we're having uh, living with regret, our life reflects that. If we're ready to go on vacation, our life reflects that too, right? You, you, people at work will know. People, right? And so we're reflecting something all of the time. But... Jesus is calling us to reflect others to him. It's an, it's an important truth, then, then this shows, and this isn't just something we inadvertently do. It matters actually how we live. And we should want to do good. But I think we use this word good pretty watered down a lot of times in our society. I'll give you a couple examples. How was your trip? Good. How was the movie? Good. How was the food? It was good. If you tell your wife, how do, I, how do I look in this new outfit? Yeah, you look good. Like, here's the question, right? I realize that it's an inflection of your voice, but what do you say to someone that says that? It was just good. Isn't that funny, right? We use that word. I'm sure this context is weird. We could say, no, no, I mean, when I mean good, it always means the greatest thing. No, not always. So we, we have to define what the Bible says about good. Here's what it says. This word means Beautiful as an outward sign of the inward good, noble, honorable character, worthy, and seen to be so. So it's not a mirage. It's not something like, oh, that person looks good, but they're really not good. Like, no, this is the truest form of good that you could have. So understand that. So Jesus is challenging his believers. Yeah, I want you to shine, but you're not just going to shine by some outward facade or some mirage. It's going to be what's on the inside. And that's going to come out. And that, that, that's going to reflect me if you're letting me work inside of you and change the inside that affects the outside. And let's be honest, we're not very good without the light. Anybody try to do that on your own and just try to plug along and like, I'm just, I, I, I'm going to be good this week. Come on. Let's all realize our New Year's Eve is coming up soon and I'll bring it up. 
You're like, no, I'm going to be good this week. You know, I'm going to watch what I, what I eat, you know. Or maybe, like, I'm going to watch what I say. I'm not going to try to get pulled into those conversations and gossip about people at work and, and do this. I'm going to be good, right? And we don't do it very good on our own. We can only last so far in our own strength because then we're like, no, I, I need something else. And when, when we reflect the light and life of Jesus, what we'll ultimately be doing is pointing people to him. And the verse says that they'll give praise to God. It will point people to him. I like this quote. It's short. It's simple. But Christians must permeate society as agents of redemption. And that's a process, right? Like, and, and I won't lie that sometimes you feel like you're the only light in a certain situation. Maybe even your own home. That can happen. I'm the only one. And yet, yet, yet you know, that idea of right, right, permeate, like, that means you have to sometimes be constant. Right? When ground is really, really dry, you can think, oh, the rain's going to do that. But it takes a while sometimes for that, for that water to be absorbed. But let me give you a list of what not to do. Okay? Isn't that helpful sometimes? We can know what to do, but then there's also what not to do. Here's ways that we can hide the light. So this is the don't do this list. Here's a few. This is not exhaustive. Being quiet when we should speak. And again, I focus in here on, on biblical truth, not just your opinion, not just like, hey, I got something to say. Like, no, no, you know, like, like somebody is saying something. You're like, no, I'm supposed to say something. Now, I understand this takes wisdom and discernment to know that. And don't just be, a, a, you know, a, a, a Rambo online. Oh, I'm going to say something. <laughs> it's very easy behind a keyboard or a phone to say something and press send. It's very different to have a conversation with somebody and say, you know what, I I really want to share this with you. Here's another one. Going along with the crowd. All right? Teenagers, right? They always get the bad rap for peer pressure. Come on, adults, let's raise our hand. We know what that feels like, too. And we don't outgrow it. There's stuff that is, you're around it long enough, and you're just like, well, yeah, you know what, I'm just, I'm just, this is just, I'm, it's affecting me. I'm just doing this, this way of thinking, this how, whatever it is. Next one is denying the light. You remember the little song, if you grew up in church? This little light of mine, right? We think, oh, that's cute. No, that's the Bible, actually. That's what Jesus said. And like, you know, when they say, you're going to snuff it out? Like, no, you know? But we do that sometimes because we're like, ah, you know, I don't want to cause waves, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make this uncomfortable. So you know what? I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dim it. You know. I know I'm not giving you every situation. But that's why I'm purposely making you think. Letting sin dim our light. Now, back in the day, I used this illustration. That's why Claire's like, "You're doing the light thing again." I'm like a little different. No, you don't have to shine it. But if this mirror was all dirty. And come on, ladies and men, you know when that mirror is dirty, there's fingerprints, there's hairspray, whatever. Like, that would not reflect the light very well. And that's what sin does in our life. It actually ends up causing us to not reflect Jesus as as strongly and as purely as we'd want to, because there's things in our life. Remember, sin is missing the mark. Ah, I keep messing up. I I, I keep doing things that I know I don't want to do, and I do them. And so sin can dirty that mirror And the next one, it says, not explaining our light to others. I I find this interesting because this happens a lot of times in like the the public celebrity forum. You know, you have somebody that's outspoken about their faith. You know, they give praise to God. I want to thank Jesus Christ for that win, you know, in that game. And other people like, oh, you know, that's a personal thing. I don't really talk about my faith. Like, really? Because I'm pretty sure Jesus just told us to shine. Now, there's different creative ways to do that. We can go down that road, but we are called to explain it sometimes and not just make it a thing. And the last one is ignoring the needs of others. So ultimately, right, this is a way we have to live it out in some shape, way, or form. Like I said, this list isn't exhaustive, but these things can keep us from hiding the light. And it really involves us being prayerful, intentional, and thorough. And like, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to, I'm not just going to be haphazardly shining that light. Like if I still have that mirror and just like, oh, oh, you know, I, I haven't, it's been, you know, 20 days and I haven't shined my light. So let me just do some real obnoxious thing and, 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 you know, do something to make someone know I'm a Christian. Look at Luke 15. 
Jesus is speaking again. He says, or suppose uh, a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Anybody lose their phone? The other day I lost my phone, but I didn't know I lost it yet. Okay? And, and the crazy thing was I was doing things in the house, back and forth. I had opened up our pantry, and I had my phone in my hand, and I put it down, but I didn't know that. And I went back, actually, I don't know why, I went back in the pantry, and I opened it up, and I'm like, what is my phone doing there? And I'm like, oh, good thing I was back in here, because I didn't remember putting it down. Anyone ever do that? Like, I don't even remember doing that. Uh, Connie lost a, a book the other day uh, for school, and we were... Like, she's texting us from home, did you see my book? And again, it wasn't like a book like this. It was a big book. So what do you do? You get out your flashlight. You start looking under beds and going, oh, boy, well, I don't want to look under here. (laughs) Looking in closets, looking everywhere. We still haven't found it. And actually, it's funny. I had to use my phone because I went to grab my flashlight that's always in the same spot, and it's missing. (laughs) And so that happens all of the time, right? This is a real situation that we can really relate to. Now, understand this, too. Culturally, this means something. Uh, The writers of commentaries kind of said it could mean one of two different things. One, a Palestinian woman would receive ten silver coins as a wedding present. Some of you are like, I would have liked that. Uh, So it's not just the monetary value. There's also a sentimental value. And if you've ever lost something sentimental, all right, how many people have ever lost their wedding ring? All right, come on. Where, where, where is Anthony? Okay, I just, all right. A, a, that, that matters, or at least it should, okay? And, and there are sentimental things that we will search for, we will look for. And again, it is possible that also this could be mean just a financial thing. This is all she had. Either way, it just shows it was important. It was worth looking for. And what does he go on to say? When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. Well, we had an experience like this, actually, I think a few years ago. Uh, Tor and Joni aren't here today, but if you remember when Tor's dog went missing. Does anyone remember that? And there was stuff all over the Internet, and, and literally you're like, oh, you feel bad. And I think they were actually away. <laughs> They're always away, right? Uh, and, and people were looking, and thankfully the dog was found. And I do. I remember being like, oh, just relieved, like, You know, just like, I could understand that, right? Like, that celebration together. And so Jesus is saying, when when you look for something lost, when when you use that light to do that, right, it'll bring joy, but not just joy to us, and not just joy to others, somebody else somewhere throws a party. Do you know this? In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Isn't that exciting? So when you shine your light, it, trust me, it makes you feel good. You're like, wow, I, I feel like that, that, that was impactful. Like I, I did something that's a, important of value, and it's not just about me, right? I have no problem stepping out of the way and pointing people to Jesus. But then you realize like, like when someone who's lost is found, like there's a party in heaven. Amen? All right, come on, you get a little bit more excited about that, right? <laughs> like, that's exciting, right? Like, that's what Jesus is saying. Like, this, this is the, the reason to do it. This is the reason to search for that lost coin, right? He's using that, that, that parable, that, that metaphor of that. And so we're called to shine. But we won't look for people who are lost without Jesus if we don't think they're lost. And if we don't think that, you know, oh, well, you know, what, what is my light going to do? Like, I, you know, there, there's probably way brighter lights, Trust me, I actually tested out a way brighter light it was. I couldn't even see. But the the reality is you are called, once this light and life, you've experienced it, you're called to to share it. And so my my simple question to you today is, are you up for the mission? It's a very simple reflect and point job. Come on, you've ever seen those people on the side of the road, right? Is that the best job ever? You just kind of like... Just point. Like, I'm not making fun. I'm like, that's pretty good. Like, and that's really, really important at certain times, right? If they're pointing in the wrong way or not paying attention, right? Right? You just simply reflect and point. Reflect and point. And that's it. And sometimes we overcomplicate that, right? Like, oh, I don't really know enough. I, 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 you, know, I, you know, there's somebody else who can do it better. I don't have all the answers to all the questions. Reflect and point. 
Jesus doesn't say anything about like answering everybody's theological questions. Trust me, you won't be able to. I won't be able to. There's always going to be something and someone that stumps you, and you're like, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> and I think that sometimes we just have to make it that simple. And that's what Jesus is calling us to do. Remember, as a whole, as a corporate, as a, as a community, as a church, we shine together, right? And then individually as well, whether it's in our home, in our workplace, on the everyday stuff that we end up doing, that we can shine for the Lord. It's what we're doing today. I'm excited, all right? Not just because I get to dress up, okay? That's part of it, all right? If you know me, like that's a, I like that part of it. I, it's cool, all right? But there's something bigger going on. And that's where we have an opportunity to do today. We have, a, we have an opportunity to shine. And I want you to know it doesn't end at 4 o'clock. I, I, my prayer as a pastor is please don't just shine when you're on this property or in this building. That's a waste of time. I've seen people do that all the time, you know. Like, oh, you know, well, I'm at church. <laughs> like, realize really quick, and just uh, in case anyone ever didn't realize this, God is everywhere. <laughs> So, like, he doesn't just live here on this property. He sees everything. Like, I always find that funny. Again, I've been a pastor for a long time, worked with teenagers for a long time. And, of course, I saw both teenagers and adults, you know, do something like this. Oh, sorry, pastor. Oh, oh, I'm in church. I'm like, if you're doing that outside of church, God is very well aware. So, are you doing it in front of me or not makes really no difference. I thought that's a little funny, but go ahead. You can laugh at yourselves. I'm going to read this verse again from the Amplified. Uh, sometimes it just gives us a, a, a bigger picture of these verses. And it just says this. You are the light of the world. Of, uh, sorry, you are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and give it light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's exciting, because I can't do that on my own, right? And that, I think that's kind of the picture that we're getting here. It's like, it's not my, my role or my job or responsibility to like make somebody understand and believe. Like, nope, I just reflect and point. And God kind of takes care of the rest. And people will see. I, I want you to realize that everything that you do for the Lord, whether it's something really simple or something really big, that God will use that somehow. And again, when that's your prayer and you just say, you know what, Lord, use whatever I said, whatever I, I may have done. I don't know what it's going to produce, but God will do it. And people will sometimes put those dots together. And you know what the cool thing is? If, they ever, if you ever get the opportunity where someone says, hey, you did this, this is an important part. Why you don't have to take the credit. You can say, oh, yeah, no problem. Reflect and point. It was really just because of Jesus. Because why else would we want to do it? When we start to take the credit, right? We start to take the, the honor and, and, and the glory. Uh oh, that's dangerous zone. We're not supposed to do that. That's not our role in that. Simply reflect and point. And I know I, I might sound like it's making it real simple, uh, but I think this is a simple truth that the Lord would want us to think about today. And because we have a real big opportunity to reflect and point today, uh, I want us to close out like this. Um, those of you who really want this to grow in our lives, I mean, I, I won't lie, I, I need growth in this area. I, I want, like I said, it takes wisdom and discernment to not let my light shine. It's way easier to do that, right? Right? To be quiet, to go, mm, yeah, I don't know, you know, and, and second guess yourself and question it. And so I want to pray for you this morning. I'm praying for myself as well. Like if this is an area that you want to grow in, if this is something that might be totally new to you, and you're like, yeah, but th this makes sense. I want to grow. I want to pray for you this morning. So I, I won't put anybody on the spot. Everybody can stand this morning. I, I'm going to close out with a general prayer. And, and I want you to realize, actually, I, I'm going to do something a little different. It's not to make anybody feel bad. If you are involved in our outreach, if you're doing a trunk, if you're volunteering, I want you to come and fill up this space here in the front of the church. Come on down. You're the next contestant. All right? And if you suddenly want to volunteer, oh, Tim and Paul, you're volunteering. Come on in. All right? 
I can recruit on the spot, too, if you really want. And it doesn't mean I'm not praying for the people who are out there. Please don't misunderstand me. I just realized, like, like you know, when, when you have a mission, right, when you have something special to do, it's important to, like, to speak to the troops that are going out there. But you're an important troop as well, whether you're just coming to attend or, or you're going to be doing stuff. Remember to pray for us, right? This is an important thing that we believe we're doing. Uh, we, we want to have fun. We, it's going to be exciting. Um, but there's a purpose behind it. And, and I, I want to pray that we're, we're ready and able to reflect and point. And that might be something really tiny. We might, and it's just it's so amazing that God will use something that seems so small to us, and yet he'll, he'll multiply it. Right? Where I didn't preach on the, the miracle of the, the loaves and the fishes, but that's the part of the point of that story, is that God will take something that seems so insignificant to us, Right? and use it for much big purpose, bigger purposes. And that's what we're praying this morning. So I'm going to pray for this group, and then I'm going to pray for you out there. Um, and then we got work to do, and I'm excited. Lord, I just pray that you would allow those people that have taken time out of their day, um, maybe prepared in advance, and we're going to be working in the next couple hours. God, I pray that we don't get caught up in the things that don't matter. Uh, we do our best, and we put that best foot forward, God, but we trust you to do that work that only you can do. Help us to shine. Help us to shine as we're coming together as a, as a church, as a community. Let us be that city on the hill today. Let people see that the true light of true light is you. <laughs> That's why we exist. And so, God, I pray that that is evident and seen through, through the fun, through the candy, through whatever conversations might happen. They may pick up a book. They may ask a question, whatever it may be. I pray that that's seen. God, I pray for our whole church, whether someone's standing or sitting right now, God, I pray that you would allow us to realize the great privilege and responsibility that we have to shine for you, God. And this isn't a drudgery. It's not something we have to do. It's something we get to do. And God, it's such an amazing thing is that you accomplish such amazing purposes when people come to have faith in you, when we just simply speak up and we simply allow you to allow our life to speak something of value, of heavenly value, of eternal value to someone else. So I pray, God, that we would give you permission right now to continue to shine upon us, help us to reflect and point. And God, I pray that we would shine brighter and brighter as we allow the light and life of Jesus to totally take over in every area of our life. We can put our hope in that. We can put our trust in that. And it, it will bring us joy, people around us. And God, we're so grateful that, that the angels in heaven are excited when, when someone comes to know you. Help us to be busy about that plan more than anything. In Jesus' name, amen.